Welcome back to the South Dakota Dynasty. Today we're in a snowy Brookings for a rivalry matchup against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Last year's game was very close, year one's game was not, and we're hoping to play well today and get our first win in this series against our arch in-state rival. Last week we did win against Utah State it was a very exciting game. Utah State had over 300 yards of passing offense, but only under 100 yards of rushing offense. The quarterback today will be John Price. Both Connor Platt and Aaron Massey are hurt, so the third string true freshman, former four-star quarterback will be getting the start. We know South Dakota State loves to run the football. We've seen Shaq Rivers. This will be the third time we've played against him. He has a big run here as it goes for 31. One thing to note, Marquise Hill, the backup, has received the majority of the carries. He's had over 29 more carries than Shaq Rivers had. Both of them have been very productive, and John Price adds a nice running element as well. The Jackrabbits have driven down the field very quickly, all on the ground. They run it once again this time to Shaq Rivers, who has 304 yards so far this year. It'll be second down and goal from the two. Price will keep it, makes a man miss, and he's into the end zone. Price is an athletic quarterback, not quite as athletic as Aaron Massey, but is a much better passer. Now we see the impact players, Jalen Page, Deontay Knox, and then for South Dakota State, Logan Bukowski and Ryan Mars. They are both very talented. Mars is the current leader in sacks on this team. Jalen Page was very good last week with 99 yards on 15 attempts. It'll be first down and 10, taking a shot downfield, and Jared Miller widely overthrows Deontay Knox. Now second down and 10. They'll go to the ground game. Here's Pierce Libby. He makes a nice spin move. And it's a 10-yard gain for a first down. A twin tight end set now from the pistol. They'll give it to Pierce Libby once again. And he's got five yards, so it'll be second down and five. It's now third down and five. Three wide set with Went in the slot. Miller steps up in the pocket, throws. He's got Deontay Knox. And that's an 11-yard reception. Knox has 24 catches for and three touchdowns so far this year. We'll go sweep outside this time. Jalen Page picks up six. So both parts of our offense looking good so far today. Dontavious Knight and Jalen Page are the back. They'll give it tonight. He picks up around three or four, but is just shy of the first down marker. Libby back in the game. Price will come in motion. and They'll give it to Libby straight up the middle. He picks up three, and that keeps our drive alive. J.R. Miller will now work from an empty set. He throws outside and looking for the back shoulder to Cooper Price. He was open but overthrows him. So now to be third down and nine. A bunch set to the right. Miller throws quickly. He's got Deontay Knox who is met by Bukowski and brought down. So to be a six yard gain and now Devin West will come on for his first attempt of the day. The kick is away and it is good. So we get on the board. It's now seven to three. Our offense strung together a good drive, but didn't do enough to get it in the end zone. We're going to need to score touchdowns today if we want to win. Price will keep it on the read option once again and makes Simmons miss, who's finally back from injury, and gains a first down there. So DeMarco Anderson played pretty well in the absence of Simmons, but we like to have our third safety back, and he makes a big play there, a loss of five. An immediate impact, and that brings up third down and long. South Dakota State setting up the screen pass. They get it to Rivers, and he is forced out of bounds. It's a six-yard gain, and it'll be a stop forced by our defense. Now first down for our offense. We'll go to the fullback, Ladorian Bolden. He gets one of his few carries so far this season. He goes for 10 yards. Went in the slot with Knox split out right. They'll go to the ground game, though, and it'll be Pierce Libby for seven yards. And Libby has 56 carries for 329, averaging 5.8 yards per carry. This quick slant route goes to Deontay Knox for five yards. Now Bolden is back in the game as an H-back. They'll go play action. And Miller has no time. Pressure gets there immediately. May have had a man wide open downfield. And it's Ryan Mars on the sack. That's his 13th in his career. Second down and 17, trying to get some yardage back, and the ball comes out. It's recovered by Noah Butler. It's another sack by Ryan Mars, 
And that'll bring up third down and 22 now. We're looking to set up our own screen. It gets out to Dontavious Knight. Tries to make Bukowski miss, but he's a very sure tackling linebacker. And it'll be another stop forced by the Jackrabbit defense. We need to get pressure on Price to rattle the true freshman. He throws to Brad Butler, though, and it's a 12-yard gain. Butler is the third receiver on this team. He plays a lot in the slot. First down and 10. They'll go to Rivers. He's met and brought down by Sylvia. It's a five-yard gain. Now third down and four as Hill checks in. It's a split backfield. Price will lob it outside. He's got his man. It's Brad Butler beating Trevon Simmons in coverage. Now Hill is the H-back. They'll go in motion, and Price will keep it trying to extend it to the outside. Tevin Robinson is there, and it's a tackle for loss, a loss of one, as the linebacker defensive end hybrid has the speed to get on the edge. Now Price all day to throw. We only rush three. Throws outside. Butler does a good job of walling off Simmons, and it's a 14-yard gain. Now they'll bring Butler as the motion man, fake it to him, pitch it to Rivers, and he's into the open field. He gets into the end zone. Ladorian Bolden couldn't get there. Ladorian McCray, I should say. And it's a touchdown for South Dakota State as they extend their lead to 11. We'll go to the ground game to open this drive as Jalen Page is able to pick up 11 and a first down. He has four carries for 30 yards so far. A huge third down here. Quick throw, looking for Cooper Price and it is nowhere close. Jared Miller was a little erratic against Utah State and misses a big one there. It'll be a give on the draw play, Tevin Robinson on the tackle. It's a five yard pickup. Shaq Rivers almost at 100 yards already. A four wide set, Rivers is, or Price is gonna keep it this time and it's Sylvia who brings him down along with Trevon Simmons, but that will move the sticks once more. A four wide set from the shotgun. Price will keep it once more. He breaks one tackle. Martells brings him down. It's a 10 yard gain for the true freshman who, like I said in the beginning, he's a decent athlete, not as athletic as Aaron Massey though. They will give it to Rivers, second down and inches. It is Ladorian McCray who meets him, but that continues the drive once again. See if our defense can get a stop here. Draw play for Rivers and a big tackle by Jackson Harvey. It's only a gain of six. He needed seven, but the offense will stay on the field. It's a pistol two tight end, two back look. They'll give it to Rivers. He's got three and the fourth down conversion is successful. A new H back, it's the fullback as bringing a man in motion. Price will just keep it himself as he picks up three. Artie is 8th carry, so he's been very active in the running game. They set up the screen pass. Here's Marquise Hill. He's an electric playmaker just like Shaq Rivers, but it won't be enough for the first. It's Bukowski who brings him down, but once then, they're going to go for it. It is Hill on the carry. He finds a hole. Kendrick is too late getting there, and South Dakota State has another touchdown. It's now an 18-point lead. South Dakota State got up big last year, but we weren't able to come back. Let's see if that holds true once again. Taking a shot downfield, it's Washburn in coverage, and it's a stop forced by South Dakota State, a quick three and out. They have a chance now to extend their lead. Price is hit as he throws, though it falls incomplete for his first incompletion. It was the big nose tackle Martells in there. On second down, they'll go screen pass to Hill. He's met, brought down, as South Dakota State will use their second timeout. They'll spread the field with four wide. We'll bring four. They set up another screen pass. Here is Hill, and he is hit down hard by one of the, as one of the subscribers said, one of the safeties, which I really like that with Ross Bukowski and Eric Zakowski. But it's 21 to three as we head into halftime. This will be a big upcoming start to the second half. We need this game to stay competitive, especially we can't allow any more points early in this second half to South Dakota State. They've run the ball very well, made some big passing plays, and our offense hasn't really been able to get much going so far. A positive though is we do start the second half with the ball, so we have a chance to cut this to a two score lead with a touchdown here. 
It'll be Jalen Page who checks in now on second down. And Dontavious Knight is the Wildcat quarterback. He finds some room to run down the sideline inside of Jack Rabbit territory. A big gain. He is an electric playmaker as a redshirt freshman. I can't wait to see him as a junior and senior. Now it's Jalen Page trying to find some room to run. He picks up six, but is stopped shy. So to be fourth down and one, offense is going to stay on the field. We need a touchdown here. And it's LaDorian Bolden once again, this time for six yards. And the drive will continue. A huge play there. First down and ten. Miller will throw. He takes a shot. He's got a wide open man. It's Cordell Hicks for the touchdown. As Hicks has made big play after big play this year, he's by far been our best receiver. Now let's see what our defense can do. As it's Price on the keeper, he picks up 10 yards. Last week we did have back-to-back -back drives with pick sixes. This would be an opportune time for something like that. Instead, it's Price streaking down the field. He's brought down at around the 35-yard line. But there is a flag down, and it's clipping called on South Dakota State. So that will back him up. It's still a first down, but it's not quite big of a gain. It was Isaac Jackson on the penalty. They'll fake it to Jackson now and lob it downfield. And Brad Butler goes up between three or four defenders and gets the catch. Four for 77 so far. He was not the one I was worried about. They have Daryl Patton and Eric McCutcheon. But it's been Brad Butler. There's a big tackle for loss by Trevon Simmons, though his second on the day. Price will throw. He's got his tight end. It's Cameron Smith who does not get enough. It'll be fourth down and three, and the field goal unit will come on the field this time. Martin kicks it, and it is good by a mile. That may have been good for him around 55 or 60. Still a two-score game as South Dakota State has a 14-point lead. Pierce Libby opens this drive with a great gun straight up the middle. Now Miller will throw. He's got it's Cordell Hicks again. He's into the open field, streaking forward, brought down to the 10 yard line, a 47 yard catch. Six for 12 start for J.R. Miller, but two huge plays to Cordell Hicks. Now it's Pierce Libby on the sweep outside. He cuts it back up the middle and picks up seven yards. It'll be second down and goal from around the two or three. They'll go power. It's Page who is stopped shy of the goal line. And it'll be third down and goal from the inches line. Dontavious Knight is your back. They'll go draw play to him. He's into the end zone for another touchdown. That is his fourth on the season as he actually leads us in rushing touchdowns. Our offense comes up with a huge drive, and now it's Jack Rivers under the open field. Somehow McCray trips him up and has a touchdown saving tackle. South Dakota State really liking this really tight pistol power formation with two backs and two tight ends. It's effective again. McCray can't stop him this time as Shaq Rivers goes 47 yards into the end zone untouched, and South Dakota State retakes the lead by 14 as they have 104 more yards than we do. We do have a 30 yard advantage in this second half though. Now let's see what our offense can do and if they can answer back and keep it competitive. It's a seven yard gain, it'll be third down and three. Too high, they give it to Libby who picks up four yards and that's another crucial first down. Miller doesn't like what he sees, so he audibles it. And now he goes play action with a shot downfield. It's Cooper Price again. This time for 48 yards. We're making big plays in the passing game. This time it's the senior receiver who gets open downfield. First down and 10. We near the end of the third quarter. It's Deontay Knox, and the passing game has begun to come alive. It is the second touchdown for J.R. Miller, and it's a seven-point game. 22 seconds left in the third quarter. They'll give it to Shaq Rivers. He breaks one tackle, powers his way forward. He is a powerful back. He's not super big, but he is hard to bring down. They'll stick with the senior running back, and it's a nine-yard gain as we have maybe one play left in this third quarter. Blitzing everyone. Price will keep it. He still finds a hole, and he's inside a Coyote territory, a 24-yard gain. So now we'll head into the fourth quarter, down by seven. South Dakota State has a drive going. 
with a chance to extend it once again to two scores. They'll go pistol full house fake it to Hill. Bryce is going to keep it. He gets a block. He keeps going. Zakowski can't bring him down on first contact. And it's a 23-yard gain. This is a chance for our defense to come up with a red zone stop. Price has room. And Simmons is too late. It's a 13-yard touchdown for the Jackrabbits. And it's back to a two-score game with a, got a lot of time left, though. Now it's Jalen Page into the open field, as our running game has also been very effective. Both offenses, to some extent, have been pretty unstoppable in this second half. Throw to Tate Wagner. He hangs on to that one and has it for 13 yards. He only has around five catches so far this year. Miller will go play action. Quick throw outside. He's got Hicks, who steps out of bounds, but it's still a 20-yard gain, and we're inside of Coyote territory at around the 23. Pitch goes to Page. He tries to get outside. He'll get the edge, but not all the way. He has 10 yards, 12 for 69, so a very nice game from him. Now they'll go back to Pierce Libby. He picks up 11. We're rotating a lot of backs in, and it's been very effective. Gilbert is the motion man. They'll give it to Libby, and it's a quick score and a great offensive drive by the Coyotes. It's back to a seven-point ball game. And we still have just under six minutes left, as that was Pierce Libby's 11th career rushing touchdown. Price will keep it once more. I didn't expect him to run as much as he has, but he's 103 rushing yards on 14 attempts. Price will keep it once again. He's got room to run again, and he's brought down to the 49-yard line. As South Dakota State is over 300 yards rushing. Our Achilles heel is really shown when we play them and North Dakota State. They both love to run the football. Rivers is hit down hard by Jackson Harvey, and it's a loss of one. Let's see if our defense has a stop in him. It's third and 11. They give it to Rivers on the screen. He's brought down. It's a gain of eight, but not enough. And South Dakota State will punt it away. So with 351 left, we have a chance to tie this ball game up with a touchdown on this drive. It's a four wide set with Hicks in the slot. They throw the check down to Knight. He tries to make a man miss. For as effective as he's been, he hasn't really made many men miss so far this year. Nonetheless, it is still a first down. Quick throw it goes to Dion Gilbert. This is a 14 yard gain and our offense is still clicking. Twin tight end to the left, they'll give it to Libby. He heads that way, he makes a man miss. He's into the open field, one man to beat, and Washburn is able to bring him down, but it's a 32 yard gain, and we have it at the 11 yard line. They'll fake it tonight, and now Miller inside the five, brought down to the two, it's an eight yard gain. We are knocking on the door here, and we'll go under center, I formation, goal line set, pitch outside, the defender can't get him, and Jalen Page is into the touchdown. He's got it, and with an extra point, we have tied this game up at 38. It's first down and 10. Price is hit as he throws, the pass will fall incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10. Only a minute, 21 left, right now we're looking at overtime. It's a big play by Pedro Martels. He diagnosed the slip screen perfectly. We'll use our first timeout. Now third down and 16, draw play to Rivers. He's hit, brought down, nowhere to go. And we'll use another timeout. So we got a minute four to work with from midfield. All we need is a field goal. Here's Cooper Price. He is with the catch. He's got 10 yards. It'll be second down and inches. 42 seconds left, Miller dumps it down, he's got Dontavious Knight, he's brought down to the 28, it's a 10 yard gain, and South Dakota will use their final timeout, so they have no way to stop the clock outside of spiking the ball. Miller throws, he's got Wint inside of the 5, he's brought down to the 2, and we're knocking on the door once again, 25 seconds left. They're going to run it. It's Libby. He's met and will lose two yards. So it's second down and goal from the four. They'll go up tempo trying to get another shot into the end zone. And the clock continues to run. We have no way to stop it. They'll run it outside. And Libby stopped again. And now the clock will continue to run. And it will hit 
triple zeros and we will head into overtime as that is just horrendous clock management by Christian Vaughn using his timeout too early trying to go up tempo should have just kicked the field goal it's a four yard gain now we're in overtime second down and six here's Knight he picks up around five or six yards and it'll be third down and one a shotgun set as Miller is met perfect option scrape defense by Bukowski his fourth tackle for loss and now Devin West is on for the field goal attempt his kick is straight down the middle so if South Dakota State gets a touchdown here they will win but if we're able to come up with a stop the game will be over first down and 10 an empty set for Price he has all day to throw throws outside he's got the running back who runs the route for 13 yards now they will go up tempo in overtime as Price will throw he has all day once again great block and great pickup it's caught Daryl Patton a 12 yard touchdown and South Dakota State will win your Coyotes will lose an incredibly disappointing end here we had a chance for the win it was horrendous clock management I can't believe that happened we had it at the two with 25 seconds left and didn't kick a field goal to go for the win we tried to run two running plays and then it got into overtime we had to settle for a field goal and South Dakota State scored very quickly and they win for the third time in this series we still have not beaten them but the last two years have been very close this year even closer than last year maybe next year we'll be even more talented and finally get our first win against them but they have a lot of returning talent for next year as well Pierce Libby goes over 100 yards Jalen Page with 82 Cordell Hicks is your leading receiver once more Zakowski, McCray and Harvey all have seven tackles Trevon Simmons in his return has two tackles for loss our offense and South Dakota State's offense were absolutely incredible neither team had a turnover we had over 500 yards of total offense and still can't win we have to keep moving forward though we can't dwell on today's game we'll be back at home as we'll be taking on Air Force and their option attack they have a very good defense but I think talent wise this is a very winnable game and we do have some prospects visiting Will Morris is their quarterback and he's not a traditional option quarterback he's not a great athlete a little bit better of a passer than you would expect but he's not a bad athlete by any stretch so we do get a few commitments first is Ethan Miller from South Dakota he is J.R. Miller's brother he's a better athlete than Miller but has a long way to go in terms of receiver ability then Logan McGee a one-star linebacker he reminds me of Jackson Harvey and that he's not a great athlete but does pretty much everything else well. No winning at 5'10", 202 from Nebraska. I think he pairs very well with Cameron Smith-Brown as a power back complement to Smith-Brown's speed element. Then we get the kicker of the future, Devin West will be moving on and it's Alex Heniz. He will be the kicker in season four. I hope you did enjoy today's ball game it was a very tough game to lose we had all the chances in the world with a comeback to win just did not do enough but if you did enjoy please leave a like down below leave your comments on the game down below what are your score predictions for our game at home against air force but i will see you for that game as we return to the dakota dome i hope you have a great rest of your day